Okay, so um, I'm trying something new. I'm recording directly from my iPad using Zoom, not through my computer. And so we'll see if the uh, video quality and audio quality is a little better. So today's lecture, we're going to talk about um, flexural requirements. And as you remember, one of the um, key uh, requirements for um, uh, structural concrete is that the strength of the concrete has to be greater than or equal to the load. And uh, <clears throat> this is the nominal strength. It's what you calculate, but it's a name only. And so this is a strength reduction factor, uh, taking into account the reliability of the concrete and it's the steel and the, the failure behavior. And this is the factored load. And um, often um, it's 1.2 dead, uh, 1.6 live, and there, there are various other combinations. But what I want to talk about right now is what's that fee factor? And traditionally, um, <clears throat> for moment, fee equals 0 0.9, and um, that's changed uh, over the years, and uh, let's talk about that. So pre-2014, uh, let me close my door here. So pre pre two thousand and fourteen, uh, this was the fee factor. Okay, so um, out this way were beams, and out this way were columns. And so you know beams are governed by moment, and columns are governed by axial load. <clears throat> And beams are more reliable because they're governed by the tension if detailed properly. And so uh, they're governed by the steel in tension if uh, uh, detailed properly. And so this factor here was 0 0.9. Columns uh, are, are not as reliable. Uh, there's more um, variability in the results because concrete compressive strength is variable. If you've ever broken cylinders, you, you know that. And the behavior of the concrete, um, we'll learn this when we go over columns in, under axial load. Um, it depends if the confining steel is spiral or other. And what that means, so let's say you have a column that looks like this, and then this confining steel, if it's a spiral, you have a fee of 0.75. And if uh, you have steel like that in the square column, and, and if this confining steel is in the form of hoops like this, then you get uh, 0.65 as your fee factor. The question is, <clears throat> when is a member a beam and when it is a column? Well, it depends on how much axial load it has and, uh, and relative to the moment. And how we're going to determine that is the strain. So if you remember in a beam, you got steel down here. The strain diagram looks like this, where that's 003. And that's going to be the strain in the steel the net tensile strain. Uh, we, we need to talk about that a little more when we get to pre-stress concrete, but for now, uh, that's the, the tensile strain. And so when that strain in pre-2014, when that strain was 0.5% or higher, you could use phi is 0 0.9. When that strain was 0 0.002 or lower, you would use a fee of either 0.75 or 0.65 if you are spiral or tied. And in between, so in this zone here, you would just interpolate. Okay. So the fee factor depends on the strain in the steel. 
And the strain in the steel is governed by how much steel you put in there. You remember the less steel you put in there, the higher the strain. And we went over deriving the maximum amount of steel. And so um, <clears throat> if you can control the amount of steel um, there, uh, you, you can get a fee of 0.9. And what happens, so let me, let me add a page here so we can, uh, um, there we go, talk about this a little more. So what happens, um, when you get this strain down here, to be 0 0.005, that distance is C, this distance is D. C divided by D equals three over eight because you look at this triangle is three and this triangle here, that base here is eight. So C divided by D is three eighths. And uh, <clears throat> okay, and so uh, similarly, if you had uh, um, just O O two at the bottom, C divided by D is three fifths. Okay, and so you can see those numbers uh, uh, right. Uh, here, C is three fifths or three eighths. Now this changed in 2014, and so 2014. Uh, so this used to be uh, 0.002, and this used to be 0.005, but now it's the yield strain and yield strain plus 003. Well, for grade 60, the yield strain. 60 KSI over 29,000 KSI E, uh, that's 0 0.00207 or 0 0.002. So that comes up with the same numbers. You get 002 and 005. But this way, if you have grade 40 or grade 50, those numbers can change appropriately. And it's, it's the same thing. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> that's the maximum amount of steel. Uh, if you could just uh, uh, stay uh, less than the maximum of steel we derived, the corresponding to the 005, you can use fee as 0.9. Uh, to ensure ductility, uh, we stay there. Okay, so less than the row max, you get a strain of 005. You can use fee as 0.9. Also, you have to have a minimum amount of steel, otherwise the, the beam will... Uh, fail as soon as you crack the concrete. We've talked about this before. And uh, so there is this, two equations, three squared F prime C over Fy. Remember F prime C is PSI and Fy and PSI, or 200 over Fy, again, Fy and PSI. And so as F prime C is less than uh, 4,400 PSI, uh, <clears throat> the uh, 200, over Fy will control, and above that, you need to do the squared F prime C equation. Okay, so that's minimum, and this is, uh, this one here is uh, row max. Make sure that that happens. Okay, so um, what I think I'll do is I'll pause this video, and then uh, we'll, we'll start another one. So I'm going to uh, stop the video, end the meeting.